Hello guys, welcome back to another video and today we have teamed up with Thermapen for their Barbecue Brave campaign and this year they are focusing on burgers and make sure you guys know how to be barbecue brave when you're making burgers. So they have sent me out this goodie box. Uh, we're not going to open it up just yet, I'm going to leave it to the side and I'm going to actually give you guys a chance later on to win this so stick around to the end of the video to find out how. But any of you who have been following the channel for a while know that Burgers are one of the things that I love to cook in the barbecue. I seem to spend half my time uh, telling people that there's more to barbecue than just burgers, but then the other half of my time is spent making burgers, so they're 100% one of my favorite things to make, purely because it's easy to get good results with them, and there are so many different things you can do with them. No two burgers are ever the same. So in this video, I'm gonna share some tips on how you can make burgers at home yourself. Uh, you don't need to go shop bought. They're quite easy to make on your own with just a few ingredients. We're also gonna look at how to cook them then to get the best results and how the thermopen makes it such an easy process. So first off, let's talk about the actual burger patty itself. Now up until this point, you might have been buying your burgers out of the shop uh, or even out of the butchers. And whilst most butchers burgers are fine and some shop burgers are fine, you never know exactly what's in them. You don't know what um, sort of the fat to meat ratio is in them. You don't know uh, what cut of meat has gone into making up that burger. So I personally prefer to make my own. Now, you might be thinking that sounds like a lot of work. I'm not interested, but trust me, there is only one or two simple ingredients go into a really good burger. The more you put in there, uh, the worse it's likely to get because you're just overcomplicating things. So you might have heard the term out there, 80-20, uh, and what that is, is 80% lean meat, 20% fat. That 20% fat content is what makes an ultimate juicy burger. Uh, you can go a little bit more, you can go 70-30, but 80-20 is the one you want to stick to. That is the bare minimum, 20% fat content. Now, if you're out shopping for mints, a lot of the time you'll find uh, lean mints, which means they've removed a lot of that fat from it, so it's mostly lean meat. That stuff does not make a good burger. It will tend to be very dry in the middle and the texture won't be great in it. I tend to make my basic burger patties out of beef chuck. So I'll either get it from the butchers and grind it myself or the butcher will grind it for you. Um, but just tell them that you're not looking for lean mince you want. Uh, sometimes it's known as steak mince as well where they haven't took a lot of that fat out of it. But just tell them it's for making up burgers and you want a little bit of fat content left in there. Uh, so just regular beef chuck or beef mince but make sure it has fat. So I'll normally take around two pounds of ground chuck and we'll go in there with some seasoning. So I'll usually use garlic granules, onion granules, salt, pepper and a little bit of dried basil. I'll leave a link in the description of this video for the, all the measurements for those spices that are going into the mix. So sprinkle that over the top of your ground chuck and start to work it in. Now be gentle with it. Uh, I don't go in there and really mash it in and press it all together. You want your burgers to be airy so there's little pockets of air in there and that's what keeps them juicy. It allows the fat to render out on them and that's what uh, makes a really juicy burger. So I use a big tray, spread it out over it and then just go in there with my hands and toss it all around. Now once that mix is ready you can throw it back into the fridge and let those flavours really build inside that mix for a little while uh, until you're ready to cook with it. So I always cook my burgers on a charcoal barbecue. You can go gas, but there's just something about a charcoal barbecue that adds an extra dimension of flavor to it and gives you a nice sear on them. Now, you may have had bad experiences with burgers in the past, uh, causing loads of flare ups. So a few of your barbecue grate filled with burgers and all that fat's dripping down into the fire, because remember, fat's important. Uh, that starts to cause flames and it just gets a bit too hot and heavy. Uh, so that's why you tend to go towards the gas barbecue. But fear not, Whenever you're setting up your barbecue, you want to leave a small portion of the charcoal grate with no charcoal on it. That is what's going to be known as our safe zone, or things are getting a bit too crazy, get out of their zone. Uh, so you can cook your burgers over the coals, really hot, you want a nice sear on there. Uh, but if things start getting a little bit too hot and heavy, one, keep the lid closed as much as you can. So once you put your burgers on there, close the lid down and uh, that'll avoid any flare ups. But if things are cooking a little bit too quick or getting a little bit too hot, move them over to that safe zone and the flare ups will all die down and you're back in control. So let's talk about how we cook them. We've got the barbecue set up, we've got our mix ready. Now it's time to form the burgers. You can use a burger press to make them, which will make them all uniformly even. But I'm a little bit more rustic here. I tend to just do them by hand. So uh, weigh them out if you want to go quarter pounders, if you want to do half pounders. Uh, so a four ounce burger is a quarter pound burger. So you can weigh the mixture right into little meatballs and then just take them up in your hands and gently form them into a patty shape. 
don't worry about any jagged edges or uh, if they're not perfectly round it doesn't matter they will still taste amazing and at this point don't overwork the meat you don't want to really press it and mash it together just form it into a patty once it cooks on the grill uh, the crust will form and hold it all together so then you want to go over to your barbecue set the burgers on directly over the coals uh, and then close the lid and walk away for a good three to four minutes it's going to take those first three to four minutes for that crust to start building up on the bottom and uh, to allow the burger to release from the cooking grate as well if you go in with your spatula and try and get underneath the burger and it's stuck just close the lid again and walk away it's not ready to be turned so then with the slightest of little nudges with the spatula you should be able to get underneath it and flip that burger over uh, then we close the lid again and walk away we're only ever going to flip this burger once uh, because the juices all cook out of the burger and they tend to pull on top of the burger every time you flip it all the juices fall off into the fire that's all your flavour disappearing uh, and you don't get a good sear on it either if you're moving it too much so we only need to sear it on one side flip it over once and sear it on the other side job done okay at this point then most people are standing around going hmm I wonder if they're ready are they cooked I'll, I'll give it another minute or two um, and that one still looks a little bit underdone I'll, I'll give it a second uh, it's not time yet to lift them off I'll just do it leave them for a minute or two to be sure however you have a lucky weapon in your pocket This is the magic wand of burgers. So, once you have flipped it over and seared it on its second side, uh, you can then take your thermopen, open it out, plunge it inside, and this will tell you what the temperature reading is in the center of your burger. As long as that temperature reaches between 72 and 75 degrees C, it is ready to come off. You don't need to take it over that temperature of 75, just in case it's not cooked. You know it is cooked, because this has told you it's cooked. So if you take it above that 75, all you're doing is cooking all the juices out of your burger. On the other end of the scale, if you lift it off too early uh, and it's a little bit pink, this will avoid that as well. So you'll know as soon as it hits that sort of 72 to 75 degree range, it's safe to eat and you can lift it off and serve it to your family, knowing that once they bite into it, it isn't going to be pink in the middle. Now you guys know that the Thermopen has been my thermometer of choice for a few years now, uh, which is why it takes pride of place in my shack. I'm yet to find another thermometer that can take such accurate readings in such a short space of time. Within two or three seconds you know exactly what is going on inside your food. Uh, so it takes all the guesswork out of it and it's such a good feeling when you're cooking knowing that whenever you put the thermopen in there it gives you your reading and your food is safe to eat. So our burger mix at the start was the key to success using good quality ingredients to make the burger. This is the second key to success, knowing how to cook that perfect burger right. So that's really as simple as it gets, knowing how to make a good burger mix and knowing how to cook it properly. From that point on, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want with those burgers, you can serve them any way you want. So I thought, right, I'll show you three of my favourite ways to actually serve them. The first one is to go with a regular sort of quarter pound cheeseburger. So I've weighed out four ounces of our mix, I've formed them into the patties and we get it onto the barbecue for that first sear. Once we flip it over then, we add on a square of cheese. Now in my opinion, plastic square cheese is the only cheese that should be on a burger. It melts perfectly, uh, it might not be the fanciest thing in the world, but it just works. So if you're melting cheese onto your burger, as soon as you flip it over, get the cheese on there. It can take a little bit of time to melt, and you don't want that burger to be at the point where it's cooked, and then you're adding cheese, because the cheese will not melt properly. So after the cheese has been melting for a few minutes, we go back in with a the thermopen and then check the internal temperature of that burger. If we're in that 72 to 75 zone, we're good to come off. For the classic cheeseburger, I'll take a white floured roll, cut it in half and brush a little bit of mayonnaise on there just to toast it over the coals. Mayonnaise, I think, gives the burger a really nice crust to it. Then we start with the bottom bun, we go on with a little bit of lettuce or any other greenery of your choice. Uh, we set on our burger patty with the melted cheese, a little bit of red onion, and then we top it all off with that top bun and that is quite a traditional simple cheeseburger to make okay next up we're going for one of my all-time favorites and this is the bacon double cheeseburger so if you're putting two burger patties into your bun i suggest making them slightly smaller than a quarter pounder uh, two quarter pound burgers can be hard to get your mouth around so i tend to go instead of four ounce burgers i'll go three ounce patties which means whenever you form them out they go a little bit thinner uh, but that's fine, they're going to cook faster and whenever you layer them up with the cheese in between them, they are awesome. So form the patties, get them on to cook. Uh, like I said, they're thin so they're going to sear really fast. Uh, once you flip them over, on with more plastic cheese on each slice. Uh, and at this point then, we're going to go in really quickly to check with the thermopen. 
Now the great thing about the Thermopen is it will take a reading right from the very tip of the thermometer. Now these burgers are incredibly thin but we can still get an accurate reading uh, with the tip of this thermometer. Uh, it's not like some other ones that have to be inserted up to a certain point to get a reading from them. So go in there, check again for your temperatures, 72 to 75. Uh, and then you want to stack both those burger patties on top of each other. I've added on a few slices of streaky bacon and for this one I've gone with a brioche roll. So once the rolls are toasted off we put our stacked burgers on there with the streaky bacon on top and crown the whole thing with the top bun and that is such a simple burger to make but boy does it taste good. Okay now let's switch it up a little bit with what I am calling the special ops burger with the OPS standing for onions and pepper sauce. So this is a massive half pound burger with cheese on there and then crispy straw onions and a pepper cream sauce. Uh, might sound a little odd but trust me once you've tried it you'll never go back. So there's a little bit more prep work involved with this one. Uh, we're going to prepare the onions ahead of time and the sauce ahead of time. Once the burger's ready then everything's to hand to build it up. So for the straw onions we're using just regular white onions. Uh, we're cutting them into nice thin shreds. Uh, the thinner the better, they'll become even more crispy. So slice them up, put them into a bowl or a tray and cover them with buttermilk. And we're going to let them soak in there for at least an hour before we uh, add them into the flour mixture. Now speaking of the flour mixture, what's going to give us that crispy butter uh, is this uh, flour mixture which we're going to add a lot of spices in there to give us a little bit of flavour on that crispy coating too. So into half a cup of plain flour I've mixed in salt, pepper, garlic granules, cayenne pepper, paprika, uh, sage and basil. Uh, so that's just going to give us a nice flavour on the outside of that coating. Again, you'll find the full measurements in the link in the description below. But add those spices into the flour and make sure they're mixed all the way through it. Next you want to get some oil into a pot. You need at least probably 3 inches of oil in the bottom of a pot and start bringing that up to temperature. Use your thermopen. You want the oil to be sitting around 180 to 190 degrees C. Uh, so this will give you a rating of the temperature in there. Once your oil is ready to go then you can start uh, preparing the onions. So lift them out of that buttermilk and shake off the excess uh, and then add them into the flour. This is going to get messy so if you use gloves um, but toss them around in that flour to get them coated in it and shake off the excess flour and put them into a tray ready to go into the oil. Once the onions are all prepared you can take them over to the barbecue and put a small handful at a time in and cook them off in batches. You don't want to overcrowd the oil or it will stop them from becoming crisp. So once they've gone a nice golden brown colour on the outside, you can go in with a slotted spoon, lift them out and put them onto a little bit of paper towel just to drain off the excess fat. Now even if you're not putting those into a burger, they're pretty awesome to serve along with a steak or any other dinner you're making. Ok our onions are ready, let's go on with the pepper cream sauce now. So we've got a skillet onto the barbecue to preheat and we've put about 2 tablespoons of butter in there. And first we're going to go in with around one small onion, uh, really finely diced. After the onions have had sort of three or four minutes to soften down and become translucent, you can go in with your garlic. Now after a minute or so, once the garlic is really cooked down, uh, you'll start to smell it coming through. Uh, you can go in with your pepper and your dried thyme. Now there's quite a lot of pepper in this, but uh, that's what's really going to give it that real peppery flavour. I haven't used any whole peppercorns in this, so it's not a peppercorn sauce. Uh, I'm not sure I would like that biting through a burger and getting a whole peppercorn. Uh, so we're going for a pepper cream sauce, so just use a coarse ground black pepper. Again, once you cook the pepper and the thyme off for a little bit, you'll start to smell it really becoming fragrant. Then we need to go in with our cream. So I've used about two cups of double cream. Get it in there and start mixing it through. Uh, you want to bring that up to a gentle simmer and simmer it for maybe 10 minutes or so uh, until it starts to thicken up and it coats the back of the spoon. And once the sauce is silky smooth, remove it from the heat and put it into a bowl uh, just to stop it cooking through and thickening anymore. Now this will make more than you need for one burger but you can keep it in the fridge and use it again with steaks, it is awesome. Uh, so keep it in there and you can use it up. Okay we've got our toppings ready, let's get into the burger. So we have weighed out 8 ounces of our burger mixture, it's a huge half pound patty. Uh, and we've formed it, we want a nice thick juicy burger for this one. Now you can do it with a couple of thinner burgers but I feel for this one here a fatter burger is quite nice. It's going to take a little bit more time to cook but remember we're relying on internal temperatures to tell us when it's done, not timings. So get your burger onto the barbecue directly over the coals and sear it off for a good 4-5 to five minutes for that first sear. Then after that initial sear get it flipped over and get a square of cheese on there. Again I'm using the plastic burger cheese but you can use whatever you want. Now with a burger this thick it's so important that you keep the lid down in your barbecue because it will be cooking from that heat coming directly from the coals. 
but with your barbecue lid down it's creating that oven effect as well so it'll cook with the ambient heat inside the barbecue it's just going to speed things up so much for you so after another few minutes we're going to go back to checking with the thermopen again looking for that sweet spot of 72 to 75 once it's ready you can get it lifted off so to get the burger built up we're using a brioche bun again uh, I've toasted that off using our mayonnaise and we're going to go onto that bottom bun with a good spoonful of the pepper sauce. Next place your burger patty on top with the cheese melted over it and then we're going to go on with a nice big handful of those crispy onions. On top of the onions then another drizzle of that pepper cream sauce, trust me you'll never get too much of it. And then we top the whole thing off with the top bun and that is it ready to eat. Trust me you have to give this one a go, it is unreal, it's such a tasty burger. So those are three ideas of burgers you can uh, put together at home pretty easy. The burger mix didn't change for any of them, it's still just that base recipe, but the toppings are different through them all. And it's through those three burgers that I'm going to give you guys a chance to win the contents of this box. So what I want you guys to do is cook one of those burgers, or a burger inspired by those burgers. You can change up the ingredients a little bit if you want. I want you to show me your uh, killer burgers based on those three burgers and I will go through and pick one lucky winner to receive everything that is in this box. Let's see if I can get this stuff out without it blowing all over the yard. So Thermopen have put together the ultimate burger kit. Uh, we have our burger flipper, a solid one. We have, of course, the Thermopen Professional. Uh, this is the key to getting good burgers, so I have a couple here already. Didn't seem right keeping them. I want one of you guys to have it. Uh, what else have we got in here? We have our tongs. We have our burger press. So if you don't want to form them by hand, uh, this little guy will make perfect burgers every time. We have a nice tub of smoked sea salt. Again, great for topping off burgers. There's loads of stuff in here. A little temperature gauge, fridge magnets, a little chopping board. The trusty old Thermopen bottle opener. That'll be handy. We have probe wipes. So again, you never want to put this into raw meat. Lift it out and then put it into cooked meat. These little guys in, you can just give your probe a wipe off. So those are really handy with some skewers, the Thermopen tea towel, I feel like this has become infamous now, the Thermopen tea towel. So it has, I'll get it opened out, I have to fold this up again to get it back in the box. All your common cooking temperatures for all your sort of traditional meats. So that will be in the box, that can take pride of place, again we've got a little chopping board. So everything that's in here I'm going to send to one of you guys. All you have to do is make one of those burgers uh, and then post it on either Twitter or Instagram and I want you to use hashtag barbecue brave in your post but also hashtag barbecue burger. Uh, I'll put those two hashtags up on the screen make sure you add them in that's how I'll find your post. So I'm going to let this competition run until the 31st of May so you have plenty of time to get your ingredients together and decide what you're going to cook and get your photos up. Um, then I will get in touch with the winner and we'll get your details and get this box sent off to you and then you will be geared up to make perfect burgers. So thanks again for Thermopen for sponsoring this video and getting in touch and getting me involved in the Barbecue Brave campaign this year. Uh, they do some awesome stuff to try and promote good cooking. Remember the link to the recipe for all three of those burgers will be in the description box below. You can go and check it out over on the Thermopen website. I'll also leave a link down there if you want to look up more details about the Thermopen and how to get it. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.